So good morning, everybody. It's the bewitching hour, 10 o'clock, and we usually kind of dilly-dally a little bit because we always have latecomers. So I wanted to say hello to my friends who I haven't seen for a while who are here today. Nice to see you, Amy and Lynn and Tim. And um, we have some people today who we also don't know who they are or how they found out about us. We'd like to ask that everybody rename themselves with either their chapter, um, and in this case, it may be chapter, it could be chapter plus state if you're from another state. And so the way that you do that is you just drag your um, mouse cursor over your video picture thumbnail, and in the right-hand corner, you should get three dots that show up. And those three dots are called ham, uh, meatballs. Click on the meatballs and you can rename yourself so you can add additional information. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start today. First of all, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ann Thomas and I am the president of the Diablo Valley chapter. I'd like to introduce our other board members and our internet technology support person. So when I say your name, would you please say hi so that your image will highlight so people can know who you are. So Zohair Chiba, Chiba is our vice president. Hi, uh, welcome to the Diablo Valley meeting. Jill McFadden is our secretary. Good morning. And Alan Katsura is our all around tech support person. I'm Alan, I don't think you have audio. Good morning, everyone. Thanks. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we have some housekeeping to take care of and there's some Zoom directions for everybody. And we're gonna talk about preferences that um, we have and what we would like for you to do during this meeting. So by this time, we assume that almost everybody knows how to turn on their closed captions. But if by some chance that you're really new to this and you're still feeling uncomfortable, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a tool control panel menu bar and it's black. And in that sort of three quarters of the way, moving toward the right, you'll see a CC icon. So you click on that icon to activate the captions. Now, when you click on that icon, a new window is gonna open up a small window slightly above that. And what you need to do is click on view subtitles. You can also increase the size of the subtitles, the captions, by clicking in, in that same list, subtitle settings, and what happens is another window opens up and there's a slider bar and you can determine which size you would like for the captions to be. You can also choose to view the captions in a full transcript. And sometimes that's really helpful for us because, you know, it can take us a few minutes to realize that oh, I didn't understand that one word that somebody said. And by that time, the captions that are below the screen have already vanished. So if you have the, the full view transcript on the side, you can easily scroll to see whatever that word was. The chat is available for you to use today. Um, you can reach out to help somebody else. And the chat is in the toolbox as well. Now, sometimes the chat gets in the way of, the, of other things that are on your screen, or you'd like to have it be in another location. There is, if you look at the little image that says chat in the box on the right, you'll see a downward facing carrot, an arrow. When you click on that, you'll receive an option that says pop out. And when you select pop out, you can move that chat box anywhere you want on your screen. You can also change the font size in that chat um, as all of us are um, 
New Year's passing, some of us are having more difficulty seeing things that are smaller. So you have the opportunity of increasing the font size in the chat. If you have a Mac, you press Command plus or Command minus. If it's a PC, you press Control plus or Control minus. Obviously, when it's Control plus, it's making it bigger, adding plus. When it's Control minus, it's taking away, so it's making it smaller. So as I mentioned, feel free to use the chat to talk to other people. We ask that you identify your name in the chat. Um, and the way that you do that is you renamed yourself so we would see it. And you can ask technical questions. We've also left enabled that you could send a private message to somebody. I know sometimes when I see somebody who's participating in a, in a meeting that I'm in, I like to say hello to them. So I'll send them a private message just saying, oh, good morning or nice to see you. And you may choose to do that as well. When it comes time for Q&A, we'd like to ask that people raise their hands. Today, we have a moderate amount of people in this meeting. It might not be as difficult, but it still is helpful because what happens is a hand. Um, Alan, can you raise your hand so somebody could see what it looks like on a thumbnail? See the little hand in the window? It shows up that there's a hand there. And also in the participants window, it orders the way that people raise their hands so that you can call on people in the order that they decided to ask their questions. So that's really helpful to us as hosts. And to have these meetings, it requires more than just one person. So today I'm the presenter and Three of our board members are working in the background on other positions. So one person admits people to the meeting. One person moderates what goes on in the chat in case there are technical questions that somebody is stuck about, somebody can help them. And usually someone moderates the Q&A. This is a feature we want to make sure that everybody knows about. So the presenter's view, what I'm looking at when I'm giving a presentation is completely different than yours. I don't get to see this double screen, but everybody else, if they are in the presenter view and you can change the view in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the presenter plus the presentation side by side. And if you look in the middle where that red circle is, there are two lines that go up and down. If you click on those two lines, you can drag those screens. So it's not, I, when I'm a um, attendee, I like to see who's talking, but sometimes I like the presentation bigger. So I can drag that to the right. I'm still seeing the presenter, but the presentation then is larger. So you're able to set this up to suit your own needs. We'd like to ask that everybody speak a little slower than normal. It helps all of us understand. It also helps our wonderful captioner, Corey Dosti, um, create more accurate captions because it's much easier to type when people are speaking soft, uh, slower. If you have an external microphone, we'd like to remind you that if you use an external microphone, the audio clarity is improved for everyone. So you might be thinking that, oh, I'm hearing this okay, but you're not necessarily thinking about what, how everybody else hears. And I can give you an example. So I'm using an external microphone. And now I put my external microphone off to the side and I'm assuming that all of you can really hear the difference. And now I'm bringing it back and speaking directly to the microphone. So Alan Kassur and I have been very busy doing tech workshops for HLAA, for leaders in HLAA about how to use Zoom, both um, how to do your settings and also how to host a Zoom meeting. And it dawned on me that I, I hear Many of you say, 
I don't use the internet very much. I don't use the chapter website. I'm not really comfortable with how to do that. And so it dawned on me that we were missing a huge opportunity on being able to help you learn how to do those. If you're don't not really fond of them, turns out Alan Kinsur and I love technology. So for us, it's really a joy and we get excited about new things. But we know lots of people really are like, oh, they find it frustrating, painful. And hopefully some of the things that you'll learn today will be helpful to you. Like to have a big shout out to Alan Katsura. He designed our website and our website was designed specifically for ease of use of people who were not super um, computer savvy. So we tried to make everything so that it's much more visible than really highly hidden. Um, there are pieces in the menu bar, the tabs that make it easy to identify the topic. And I'm very grateful to you, Alan, for doing that for us. And our website has lasted for a really long time and it still is really very usable. So thanks again. Okay, so this is what our website looks like. And what we're gonna do is, this is just a slide and I'm going to actually go online and actually go to our website and bring it up so that I'm able to show you exactly the things that are um, on our website and I can point them out to you. So I'm gonna stop sharing this screen and I'm going to share our actual website. So this is what our website looks like. And right now you are at the home screen. Oh, and I see here that actually I'm still logged in as an administrator. So I'm gonna log out. Let's see that if that works. No, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so, ah, okay. Hang on one second. Okay, here we are. So as you see here, these pieces are called tabs and there's drop down information on each of these tabs. Every month we update the home page so that the home page has what our next meeting is. So we decided that in laying out this website that the most important thing was that it was easy for people to find the meetings. Because that's where almost all of us have received the most benefit from meeting and talking with other people who are in the same situ situation that we are and having difficulties. And for those of you who, who haven't been participating um, in our meetings in a while. Um, I want to share the really great news with all of you that I got a CI in December and I am over the moon excited about it. Um, thinking about, I want a second one. Anyway, so if it weren't for HLAA, I probably would be nowhere near having my implant or having felt as comfortable about getting it as I did. So on here, you'll see right here, we require registration to join our meetings to keep out lurkers and people who are going to interfere. You click right there and you can register. Um, we also have a YouTube channel and we have started uploading some of the recordings for our meeting. You can subscribe right here. So every time you run your cursor over something that's usually in a different color, see how the line appears underneath here? See how a line appears underneath subscribe? That means that that place is hot. And so I could put the whole URL there and URL means the address of the website, but you know, they're so long, they're ugly and confusing. So I can type here and behind the scenes, I put the URL in and you just need to know these things are hot and it means there's something else there. So we have additional information. Our, our website does not have very long scrolls, some scrolls. 
Um, we have wonderful reasons about why to join our chapter and other information right here. We also on this side run, it's called an RSS feed. It's directly from HLAA and all of the news information that they post is automatically posted right here. So if you're thinking about, wow, you know, I really wonder what's going on at the national level with HLAA. Maybe you haven't subscribed to the HLAA e-news. All you have to do is come to our website and these are the latest things you can see here. And Tim Browning, I think is here today. Thanks, Tim. Um, this is the latest post from Tim Browning. It was 331.21. So this, and you look at all of the different pieces here, you can see the dates for them. We'd like to remind everybody that um, how important hearing loops are when we um, come back to meeting in person. We had, we put up a new tab as soon as COVID-19 started. Here's some healthcare tips on COVID-19. So what happens with the drop-down menu is you just click on that piece and something that I need to communicate to everybody that I think is difficult for people who may be within our age group. And that's that we grew up in a flat one-dimensional world in how we gathered information. So we were accustomed to books. We were accustomed to encyclopedias and all of those, what you see, what's absolutely in front of you is really all that's available to you. And it's a paradigm shift in thinking to transition to the technological world that we live in today because everything is layered. So everything that you're looking at has information behind information behind information. So the tab is only the front piece. So when you click on that tab, you're being directed to other information behind. And I think that that's kind of a difficult transition to make. But if you can make that transition, oh my gosh, the internet, the world of it is just huge. So this is the piece that happens to be on healthcare and COVID masks and things like that. You can see right here that it's 41 pages. Um, on this one, it has a pop out up here. You click on the pop out and you have a whole nother presentation. So when you click on the presentation, this was a presentation given by Chad Ruffin and Tina Childress at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay, so let's go back to our home page. And so we went a page forward and there are arrows here. So see there when I take my hand and bring it up over the home page and it turns blue, I can click on that and go back to the home page, or I can go right up here and click on home. But I'm gonna click this so you can see that. And the delay is just because of the internet it's um, this morning. Okay, so we're back to our home page. We have recently added a new calendar feature. We, pre we previously had a calendar feature that was um, just a, ta a table. Now we've added a really wonderful calendar feature and I'll show you that in a minute. So we still have maintained the table for people who might wanna look at that. And when we host outreach events, when we are going back to meeting in person, we update the events that we're having in outreach. We have traditionally engaged in at least five outreach events in the community a year. So our new monthly calendar. Come on, there you go. Okay, so this lists, so for April 3rd today, this is our meeting. You can click on the meeting here and it takes you to additional information. The same kind of events calendar is now posted on the HLA California website. And the HLA California website is listing all of the meetings all over California. Everybody's invited to any of them. So at any, any time you'd like, 
if you would like to find out what's going on anywhere else in California. And later I'll tell you about the HLAA website, which is listing um, events all over the United States. Everybody is welcome. If someone decides to list on the calendar, everybody's welcome. So there are it, the pandemic in that sense has offered us just an unbelievable opportunity. It turns out that the HLAA North Bay of California chapter has been hosting on two Thursdays a month, I think it is right now, um, HOPE meetings, which are hearing other people's experiences, and many of us have participated in them. Please feel free to join that. So these things are just for you to um, find out what's going on. Now the advocacy information tabs are tabs that can really benefit all of you. I'm gonna come back to that, but I'd like to point out just that we have a membership tab. Let's say you get a notice from us that your membership is due. All you have to do is go to our website, click on the membership tab and you can renew your membership. We also take donations online. You can also um, sign up uh, for our Amazon Smile page. And about us is just information that's here for the broader community. So yearly we apply for grants from the Kiwanis, the Lions, the Lafayette Community Foundation and other organizations. And they're looking to verify who you are. And by having this about section here, they get to have a quick overview of who we are and who our chapter is. If you have not read or don't know about the founder of HLAA, we have a section in the About Us about Rocky Stone and his story is really, really phenomenal. If you have not um, read about him or know very much about that, I really recommend that just for entertainment and to feel grateful to go ahead and, and uh, click on that link. We also happen to have a members only section of our website. We've not been very successful in getting all of you to participate in that. But when you click on the members only section, it takes you to a whole nother web page that we have linked to this. And what we were originally hoping was that we could have an active chapter chat forum. You can also, we have membership cards. You can download your personal membership card from there. And when you click on the, the way to sign in is just with your um, normal email address that you use to communicate with us. Now, these two pieces here are things that I really wish all of you were very actively becoming educated about. So as a whole, people with hearing loss are really reticent to speak out about their civil rights as a person with a disability. And we've spent a lot of time and effort really flushing this out for you. So this explains to you about the ADA and civil rights. And the reason that this hasn't been changed is because they've been delinquent about coming out with the new logo. I've been looking every month and in the last slide we have, I found one that I copied, but they haven't released it for general usage. So this outlines what the history of the ADA was, defines what effective communication is from them. So see here, when you click on that, it gets the line underneath it and it's a different color. That means that that's hot. So that takes you actually directly to the actual document. So you don't have to hunt all over the internet to find that. We spent time and effort to put these things for you to make it easy. These are frequently asked questions for the ADA. It's a 31 page booklet. It's how to file a complaint, revisions about service animals, frequently asked questions for communication access and knowing your rights for service members who are returning. I'm after, uh, over, over these overseas duties. The ADA basically is divided into three sections that are called titles. And Title I deals with employment, and this takes you to that section. Title II is state and local government. 
county, state, and local government. So they're required to provide accommodations for us in all of their programs and services. So in California, historically, our local governments have all kinds of workshops and things that are provided as part of the Parks and Recs Department. All of those are required to be accessible to us. So if you didn't know that, you wouldn't know to ask. And if they don't have that, to um, activate your resiliency bone and keep asking for it because it's required. And title number three is for public accommodations. So that's like hotels, um, all kinds of venues that would be um, entertainment that you might wanna go to and things like that. So as you can see, this is very informative to you and very easy to use. So in this section, there's civil rights. We have a section on communicating with your legislator, how to find out and in there, it's how to find out who that is. You just click on links and it's all set up. We have a communication access program. There's the BART Accessibility Task Force. And because of all of us, we have hearing loops on BART. All of the agent booths at BART now have hearing loops. That's because of us. If it weren't for us, none of that would have happened. Um, there were, and this was is left over from 2020. They were captioned performances that we had advocated for. And whenever there's something that's like that, we post it on the website. And this is an app, Smart 911. And in some parts of our county, we have it, some we don't. I really recommend that everybody really um, sign up for it. And what you're allowed to do in that app is you're allowed to provide information that could be of high value if somebody needed to come to you in emergency. So I definitely want to know any of our first responders to know that I have profound hearing loss and it could be the middle of the night, we could have an earthquake, could be all kinds of things. I could fall down walking outside of my house to get the newspaper in the morning before I put any of my hearing devices on, if somebody, um, if, I, if I hurt myself and first responders needed to come, I wouldn't be able to understand them. So Smart 911 connects with 911 service and the information that I have revealed is available to all of the first responders. This information under, inform, under the information tab, we have multiple brochures that were created to help all of us learn what is required in emergencies for us. And so in emergent, this is an emergency prepared brochure. We have a smoke and carbon monoxide detector brochure. We have some videos in here. And this is a glossary of terminology for people that, you know, like any industry, we have special words and you need to know what those words are. So <clears throat> we're really hoping that you take advantage of what these pieces are. We have a press room that had HLIA news. Um, our chapter has won many, many awards for our outreach and advocacy work. And at one time we did have a newsletter, but I think that I did the newsletter for eight years and I just couldn't find anybody to replace me. So now we just basically do e-news but the newsletters that we previously did, some, much of the information is still valuable and those newsletters are here. We also have um, the last newsletter from Hearing Loss California, which was summer 2020. And uh, the Californian is going to an online version too. It just is very, very expensive to send print documentation. So that's pretty much our page. So now I'd like to show you, and before I move on, I think that we probably have time. Does anybody have any questions about our website? Oh, great. Okay, so that means that I was able to explain that in a pretty simple way. Okay, let's hope that this is the HLAA. Nope. Uh, okay.
Okay, so now this is the HLAA website. And the HLAA website is very, very dense. And by dense, I mean the information is layered, 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 layered. And so I want to point out to you some sections that could be very helpful to you. Um, the first thing that I'd like for everybody to know is HLA has an e-news and it comes out, I think every two weeks, every three weeks, something. And here's a very easy way to sign up for that. I really recommend that you do that. Um, if you don't do that, you can see most of the information on the hot link for the IRS, RSS feed on our side. So if you think, oh, well, wonder what's going on over there, you can always come to our website to see that. Um, I'm not encouraging you to look at the become a member of HLAA because every person who's a member of our chapter, um, our membership dues structure is one that includes HLAA. But this is a brand new feature. And thank you, Tim Browning, my hero, for making this happen. So we have begun having a communication tool called Groups.io. And I encourage you to join them. And these are replaced the old Yahoo groups, but with many, many more features. And one of the features is that it can have an events calendar. And so all of us all over the United States have been listing our events on this calendar and HLA put a link on their website. So if you click on this calendar, what comes, what's going to come up now is the HLAA actual calendar of events. So that we're having virtual meetings, we're having uh, webinars, and there are some leadership components that are also there. So if you see right here, the chapter development workshop that was last Thursday, that's the one that Alan Kutsura and I were the presenters. Um, and we had one the week before. Um, we have one coming up that's gonna be a Q and A for that. And we have three more. So that's also gonna be, that's also part of these presentations. So you, could, you can do an HLAA, a hearing thing every day. If you wanted to find the HLAA chapters that are meeting online, all you do is click on this tab and here is our events calendar. Wow. I mean, this we've never had this before. I am so excited. You can tell by my voice. I am so excited that we have this capability. So you can see here, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 10, 10, 10.30. Today, there were events. So ours is a 10 o'clock event and we're encouraging people to put the, what the event is about first rather than their chapter to make it easier for people to skim the calendars. So if I take my cursor and put it over the 7 a.m., you can see that it was the um, Indianapolis chapter is hosting it. It was from seven to 9 a.m. It's a vir Google virtual meeting. And the name of the presentation was the Americans with Disabilities Act. And Matt Norris is the presenter. Okay, so that's that one. This one is the Treasure Coast chapter in Florida. And they're doing hearing loss and the significant other. So every single one of these, it's very easy for you to go, gee, I'm in the HLAA. Oh, I'm feeling lonely. I want, I want to see my buds. I want to maybe meet some new people who, who I didn't know who live in other parts of the country. It's all here for you. Now, the HLAA tabs, which run across the top, you can see hearing help program events. Each one of those is very dense. See all of these words that are on here? Each one of those takes you to some other place. Now, I looked this morning and I was playing with my phone a little bit too to see what actually showed up for the HLAA website. And on my phone, this section right here seems to be more obvious. And you can see here that get information, hearing loss, basics, technology, check out your hearing 
Here you can see the latest magazine. So I think that this section right here generally makes it a little easier for you to find what you're looking for. So if you wanted to find a chapter, this list, this is a map and lists all the chapters in the United States. You could look for professionals. So I'm just gonna click on this one so you can see what that's like. And this takes you directly to a page that's immediately about just basic information about hearing loss. And these are on the side here, all of these are additional links. Um, HLAA has partnered with the Mayo Clinic and there's a forum for hearing loss with the Mayo Clinic. If you wanted to participate in that, you click on this, you register for the account and Obviously, all of you know that I'm registered for everything, right? So theoretically, if you didn't want everything dumped into your regular email account, I would suggest that you make a Gmail account just for some things. So you could theoretically create a Gmail account just for your Mayo Clinic forum, because it's pretty active. And so that means all the information would go in there so it's not cluttering your uh, regular personal email account. So this is, you can see very, it's very dense and deep. And when you look here, all of these things that are purple, when you drag your hand over it, they have an arrow at the end here. There's additional information behind those arrows. So this says, why am I losing my hearing? You click on that and there's a definition of and a, a short paragraph about the, the reason most people lose their hearing. Why should, what should I do if I have trouble hearing? Well, of course, the first thing I would say is come to an HLAA chapter meeting, right? Um, so it, it just talks about other things. Now, this page right here actually does not list everything that's available under hearing help. So after you, as you become more comfortable with the sections, I'd recommend that you start then looking in this hearing help tab, because as you can see, every single thing that's in purple on here is a whole nother topic, just like the page that we looked at here with those purple additional information pieces behind it. So these are hearing loss basics. This is technology. So hearing aids, there's a whole huge pace about that, over-the-counter devices, cochlear implants, assistive listening technology, financial aid and things like this, state telephone programs, and they're different communities. So we happen to have a, a virtual veterans group, virtual veterans chapter. And so you can see over there in communities, it's there. Now, if you decide, okay, so what kinds of programs are there in events? Okay, so we have advocacy and this whole place here is about knowing your rights. So after you read and become familiar with the things that are on our website, you might wanna go and say, well, gee, what's not, what does HLAA have? I wanna find out more. So then you could click on that. Um, most of you know that I'm also a member of the, Get in, the HLAA Get In The Hearing Loop Committee. And so this is all about get in the hearing loop. And over the last two years, we've created extensive documentation for you. It's called a get in the hearing loop toolkit. And it's on our website. It is also on the HLAA get in the hearing loop groups IO. All of these items are part of the uh, toolkit. The whole thing was created to try and provide the tools that you need to advocate in your community. You can download the checklist here and the checklist lists all of the documents. So you might choose to read one at a time, use the checklist after you've read it and you're educated and familiar with that, you could check that off. Oh, I've done that, I know how to do that. And then continue on because as you see, this is an extensive body of information. We have postcards that we've used in our chapter. Oh. And they were created to be able to leave for venues 
we all know that lots of venues have hearing loops, have accessibility, and they don't have any advertising for it. So this card says here, here, has directions on the back. That's here for you to download and have printed if you would like to do that. We even have a, po a basic PowerPoint presentation with notes. So you don't even have to create a PowerPoint if you wanted to give one to some city government, it's right here for you. So as you can see, this is a really valuable resource to you. And if you're not going there to look or if nobody explains where these things are, you might be really missing some things that are important to you. These are some, the middle column is some archives from the convention. If you haven't been to an HLA convention, whenever we meet back in person, it's really something that's wonderful. And I imagine our next one when we meet together is gonna be just over the top. This year, we're having another virtual um, convention. And last year I was um, thinking, well, how are we gonna be able to do this? And I have to tell you, the virtual convention was so heartwarming to me. And the virtual walks for hearing that we're gonna have again in the spring, it really brought me to tears lots of times, the number of people and companies that supported us and having hearing the communication of their stories. So as, that, as we approach those events, I hope all of you participate. So here's a piece on the walk for hearing, whoops. So that's what happens, the walk for hearing. I didn't bring my cursor down low enough. So the walk for hearing, um, how to become a sponsor. There are NChat, which is a um, technology uh, webinars here, schedule of past recordings. This is for state and, and uh, chapter leaders. And there are some, I know in our group today that there are some other um, chapter leaders from other chapters here. And here's where all of the information is. If you were looking for a chapter logo, it's in the chapter leaders resources. So it defines what a leader is. It gives you communication tools that everybody should be subscribed to so you know what's going on, how to start a chapter, your annual requirements, legal and government issues, finances, publicity and promotion. And I have done a lot of work with HLAA and at the convention um, trying to upgrade our advertising and promotion for the chapters a presentation that I gave at the 2012 um, HLA convention is listed right here. HLA frequently came, recently came out with a guideline for writing style, how we refer to things, um, using people first language. You need to find an HLA logo. The logos are all right here. And some other information here on creating an identity. Um, and the chapter development workshops that we've been hosting are all listed right here. So let's say you didn't attend the chapter uh, workshop. You can come back and watch it anytime you want. Some of them have additional documentation. Um, I think I gave the first one. Oh, no, here. Oh, Alan, here's our last um, workshop. So both of the two workshops that Alan and I just recently gave are now posted. So if you want to learn more about how to um, use Zoom, either to set it up and in the background, and we had additional documentation with that too. So here are the Zoom uh, recommendations, and we have another piece that belongs right here that didn't get uploaded. So you can come back and look at all of those things. This is all just for you. If it weren't for you, this information wouldn't really, there wouldn't be a need to have this information here. So if you'd like to find HLA brochures and literature, you just go to news and media. You can look up previous issues of the HLA magazine. I don't know if you're like me, but I have magazines in the garage. I have magazines everywhere. Sometimes the one I want isn't, I'm thinking by saving them, right? That it's going to make it easy to find. But in actuality, <laughs> that may not be the case. I can come right here and find an issue. Let's say one of you decides that you'd like to submit an article to the HLA magazine. 
You can do that. It's right here. You submit an article. Oopsie. You submit an article. Here's the latest Hearing Life e-news. This is some other information here. And this is about HLAA. If you were interested in HLAA's financial statement, their uh, latest 990 is listed here. You have who is the staff of HLAA? Who are the board of directors? Here's a history of, uh, of Rocky Stone, the history of HLAA and position papers. So as you can see, these are really helpful resources for all of us. And I hope that by giving this overview that it made it easier for all of you to potentially go back and take a look at some of those pieces to help you become better informed as an advocate, better informed about how to take care of yourself and information that could be valuable for you as a person with hearing loss. So we're gonna open up our meeting right now to Q&A and we'd like to ask that people raise their hand. And the way that you raise your hand is look at the bottom of your screen, the toolbar that runs across the bottom and where it says reactions. There are more things in there other than raise your hand and you can use those too. But the first one, when you, when you look at that, says raise your hand. And when you do that, Jill, you had your hand up a moment ago. Can you go ahead and raise your hand again? Oh, I, I was doing this. Yeah. See? Was, oh, yeah. thanks. Um, yeah. So Jill gave a different reaction. She indicated that she thumbs up for the presentation. So she liked it. Can you do just raise your hand? Yep. Okay. So see... Jill raised her hand, so it's easier for the moderators to figure out, Alan raised his hand, who has a question to call on them. And also in the participants window, we see a hand and the hand is listed in the order that a person raised their hand. Okay, so now we're open to Q&A. So who has a question? Oh, come on, somebody has to, I, I couldn't have done that good of a job. Ah. Tim. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you first for a very, very good overview. This is a lot of information uh, to cover. So um, I hope everyone, if you feel a little overwhelmed, just give yourself a little time and explore. Um, and I, I, I was wondering from a chapter perspective, um, you know, you can navigate the website, but it's only as good at the content. How are you guys um, keeping all this content updated on your um, own chapter website? You know, the latest information on legislation, latest bills and resources, because that's a challenge we're having with our Los Angeles chapter. How do we, what, what processes can we do to get it updated? So when people do come to the website and navigate, like you showed, they're getting good information. Um, Tim, which particular sections are you talking about? Like some of the information, um, like on the advocacy information about the ADA, um, I watch personally what's going on with the ADA and I'm subscribed to um, things that are happening there, lawsuits that are happening, but there hasn't been a whole lot of changes to the ADA since um, the standards were updated in 2014 and then the documents were all updated. So until there's another major change for the, the whole pieces about the ADA, that's not going to change much because the ADA standards were modified in 2010, and then they had to update all of the um, additional documentation that they had to go with that. And once that was updated, there's not a real need to update that again until the standards are changed again. So that piece stays pretty much the same. And you know what? I'm going to go back to 
our website to see, to um, ask, oops, wrong screen, sorry. Okay, so see Tim in here, most of the information is static. Okay, so the BART Accessibility Task Force, all of those, and with the pandemic, we hadn't had much activity, right? Um, the information pieces, most of those pieces are pretty static too. So there is not a real, there. so those pieces can stay fixed, which relieves the pressure from Alan and I who maintain the site from always having to be um, on top of that. And this RSS feed from HLIA, that's automatically updated. So that's current. Um, the calendar, I update the calendar. Um, so what sections would you, are you having problems with? Um, you know, I, I think it more behind the scenes in terms of how are you, it sounds like you and Alan are handling the content. So on the LA chapter side of things, our resources section, it, it's pretty old, pretty dated. And so we need to make an effort to get out there and find out more about the Lions Club or more about other publications we can advertise our chapter meetings with, or I'm just making these things up. But are you and Alan mainly handling this? And do you have a process in place to coordinate updates to the website? Or do you get volunteers? Or what do you well, do? Because we're, I don't in know. Our chapter know is basically topic. Alan and me. So we have an extensive glossary. And Alan did all of yeah. this. And the pieces in the glossary, they're all hot. So. Hmm. If you really wanted this, we would be open to sharing it with you because, you know, Alan and I really would like everybody to be able to have the most accurate information that they possibly can have. And there's no point in reinventing the wheel if we've already done it. Yeah. So on each one of these have things behind it. And this is just the glossary. Um, let's see what's hmm. in. I think our mer emergency preparedness is only our brochure. Yeah. So I don't see, I don't know if you knew that this was here, knew these things were here. So um, in our advocacy outreach efforts, the questions that people asked us at the outreach event, and also um, questions that our chapter members asked us at our meetings were the driving force to creating brochures to make it easier for people to skim information. Um, our smoke and carbon monoxide. Oh. So this is an area that all of us are lax on. I mean, everybody who has anything <clears throat> over a mild hearing loss needs to have appropriate smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. And so this was a very easy way to distribute that information. So this hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, um, I think we also have, oh, I see something that's missing here, but it's, it'll, we'll take care of it later. So organizations, most of the organizations stay the same. Parents, dogs, deaf and disabled telecommunication. And these are all hot links. Okay. Yeah, I guess I was, I was just very impressed with how much rich information you have on this site. So I guess part of me just wants to kind of steal some, some of this for the LA site so our members can benefit and then, you know, other chapters as well, but uh, nicely done though. Thanks. Okay, so mm -hmm. Tim, can you lower your hand? Yep. So Jill is our moderator. She okay, just- Okay, Lynn. Lynn? 
Unmute yourself, Lynn. Sorry. Yeah, I first I wanted to thank you for all of this information. Um, I can't wait till I have more of my own time to go back and click on more things and see more of what you have here. Um, I wanted to comment that um, this morning I was already on another HLAA Zoom. I was on the Sarasota, Florida Zoom when they had a speaker on um, hearing loss and family and significant others. Uh, my husband feels that there's not enough information for spouses of people with hearing loss, and he was interested in hearing what they were going to say. It was a really good presentation, although I don't think it answered his questions. Um, but I do look at the calendar, the IO calendar, and I participate in a lot of different HLAA chapter events um, just to get more information. And I highly recommend that other people do that as well, because some of them are really well done. Most of them are really well done. And it's interesting to, after a while, you get to know the leaders of the different groups. And even though we're looking at them on the computer, I feel like I know a lot of them. And um, I think that the more of that that goes on, the smaller HLA will feel. So I don't have a question. I just had these comments. Thanks, Lynn. And listen, okay, so we're all with friends here, right? So can you see how your face isn't fully in your screen? Can you move the direction of, there you go, that's where you need to be. Can you see the difference? Yes. It's so much easier to lip read. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you lower your hand? I, oh, yeah. Okay, so who else has something that they'd, that they'd like to ask? So I know an area that has been problematic for some people is when they've used our website to renew their membership. So we use PayPal as the company that handles the processing. And you don't have to have a PayPal account to use that. So please feel free. I'm chatting some more because nobody's asking another question. So I'm going to show you some things that the wrong piece again. Uh, Safari. Okay, so here's the membership. Come on. Okay, so we have everything right in front of your face right here about what to do. If you would like to use an online form, if you would like to use PayPal, you just go ahead and do that. If you decide that you would like to, that you don't wanna do that. and it's more convenient for you, but of course, you know, PayPal takes out a little percentage. So we get a little less money. So if you would decide to um, print your registration and mail it, we've provided the link here. So when you click on this, there is a membership form. You can just check which level of membership, how much you're including, fold it up, put it in an envelope with your check and send it to us. So everything is right there. So I'm going to click on this. And this takes you straight to PayPal. It's a secure connection. You say if it's new or it's a renewal, your name, if it's a couple, who the other person is, um, the level of membership you're joining. If you are also including an additional donation, you click, if you want a receipt, you submit it and you're taken to another page that you input your credit card information. Pretty simple. 
and pretty straightforward. And as all of you can imagine, the logistics of running a chapter, there are all of these things that can be really labor intensive. And for many of us, we run on with skeleton crews. So having this be an automated feature where everybody, when you check this, that you get a receipt. And we have another software program that we basically have that really handles membership. So all of the uh, and invitations and reminders that you receive, Alan and I set up all of these things behind the scenes. So those are automatically generated and you could set it up starting three months out, two months out, one month out, one week and you're delinquent. So we don't physically have to do that work because we wouldn't have enough time. So does really no other questions? Does anybody have a suggestion from another meeting? No suggestions? Okay, so there's a meeting that I want everybody to think about attending and it's not our meeting. The meeting is um, gonna be hosted by HLAA North Bay of California. And I think it's their April meeting and Ronnie Adler, who is the, um, I think she's the director. She's not a director, but she's the person who, oh, I should look in my magazine. I don't know what her, I can't remember it, it, her exact title. Ah, it's a manager. So she's a national uh, walk for hearing manager. And we really owe her a huge debt because she's so committed to the walk for hearing and the money that's been raised for HLAA and getting our name out there. So she's gonna tell her story as the meeting presenter for the North Bay of California presentation coming up. And since the walk for hearing is gonna, the uh, Bay Area walk for hearing is gonna be in June, it, you might find it really inspiring to hear her story. So. I highly recommend that you think about attending that. And because I think it's so important, I'll for sure send out an e-news with their event listed um, with an easy to register link. Now, if by some chance um, you decide, okay, well, where else can that be? You can always go to the HLA California website and there's a calendar on their website and it lists all of the chapters who are hoping virtual meetings in California are listed on there and the North Bay chapter should be listed. So the San Diego chapter happens to be really hosting more support group type chapters and invented the best name. It's called Chatter. <laughs> so you could, you could attend their chatter meeting and chatter away with other people. Now today, all of you are here, we're trying to get you to chat a little and ask a question. So if, if all of you were in, in the San Diego chapter, oh, maybe, maybe Shar is much better about getting people to chat than I am. Um, the Los Angeles chapter has meetings that, Tim, it's the third Saturday of the month. I know it's the fourth. The fourth Saturday. Oh, fourth Saturday of the month. And their meeting that they had, uh, their last meeting that was a week ago, was over the top fabulous. I heard a person um, describe the process of hearing both from a mental component, a physical component, and also an intellectual component about how all of these pieces go together in a way that I had never heard expressed before. Um, so Tim, did you record that? And is that recording gonna be available to people? Uh, yes, we did. And it's actually on our website. So if you go to our website, you will see the YouTube recording right there. Um, do you have a, does, does the LA chapter have a YouTube channel? We have a, a brand new one, but we're still in the process of yeah. working through it. So I saw your YouTube subscribe 
earlier on your chapter site. So we're going <laughs> to probably steal something from there, but we're just getting started. So we have been slowly working on that. And thank God for you, Alan. Um, I don't know what we would have on there if it weren't for you. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get the captions with the video. Um, so I think that we have three or four posted. We may end up posting some other ones that were earlier, but we're just hoping to keep moving forward. Okay, well, listen, if nobody has any more questions, does anybody have any news? Something that's happening? I have a question, Anne. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, it's either you or Tim can answer it. What was the date of that meeting that you heard that was so wonderful? Saturday, the LA chapter. Yeah, it was um, last uh, Saturday, the 21st. I put the link in chat. There's a link in the chat right now that takes you directly to the page that summarizes oh. the meeting. Okay. So um, you click on that and you'll, um, you'll see the presentation and, uh, the, and the video. Um, uh, Nancy, the presenter, was wonderful and she was she kindly gave us the presentation. So you also can look at the PowerPoint. So everything is on there for you. Thank you. Now, this is another question. When somebody posts a link in a chat, I don't know how to use it. Um, Jill, yeah. so the link is hot, but what happens is we close the meeting. And if you didn't copy the link, you don't have access to the link unless you save the chat. So I click on it right now. No, what I would suggest you do is to highlight it. And since I know you have a Mac, yeah. just, just open up your notes or text edit and just paste it in there. And so when the meeting ends, you have it. Okay. Okay, so for people who have PCs, um, I think that you probably, oh, Tim, what could you save that you, cause you do PCs, right? What could you save that easily in on a PC? Or Alan, one of you, can you answer that? You could save the chat and then go back into your document Zoom file to the meeting date. Save the whole chat. And yes, you do have that option. Well, I or, just highlighted it and tried to edit and copy and it didn't work. Oh, you I could just know. actually just click on it from the chat and it will open the window up, but it'll take you away from this meeting. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But you have it on your screen if you want to look at it later or you could bookmark it or whatever you want to do. All right. So I'd like to talk at the moment about the fact that Zoom has a desktop app, both for Macs and PCs. And if you're in a meeting like this, and if you did what Alan was suggesting Jill did, that would open up a web browser with the address. And because I know that many of you are not tech savvy, I know that one of the things that happens then is all of a sudden you're taken someplace else and you're going, oh, how do I get back to where I was? <laughs> So Jill's laughing because she knows. Okay, so if you have the Zoom desktop app, you can just click on that in the in the bottom bar on a Mac. It's called a dock. And in Windows, I don't know what it's called, but it's there as well. So if you also know to look down in Windows, you'll see which things are open. And you can just click back on the Zoom window and it'll bring you back to the meeting. Okay. For So Tim and Alan, you know that my number one forte is Max, and I've learned about PCs. Did I answer that correctly for PCs? Just shake your head up and down. Yeah, okay. Okay, so Bob Zastro, you're mute. Okay, I just noticed the view here. 
we have Pamela new to HRIA and find out why she has joined us. Bob, actually, I've been carrying on a conversation with Pamela throughout this meeting. So she has some questions and we've been communicating back and forth through the direct or private chat. Okay. So Pamela, if you would like to say hello, we would like to welcome you. We hope you join us in the future. We're a friendly group of people. Um, we're here to support each other. So if you wanna say hi, if you wanna introduce yourself, just raise your hand. Otherwise, we'll let you lurk for a while longer. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, I'm trying. Hey! Man. Wait, 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 wait. Unmute yourself. Lynn, unmute yourself. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Now you can. I can't. What I was trying to do, she said, raise my hand. <laughs> I couldn't. I got hosed up, but I got back in. <laughs> uh, I'm in Colorado. So I'm, uh, but I'm originally from Mill Valley. So, and I'm going to plan to move back to California. So I, he, Alan was helping me um, figure out where I should join. Well, of course, I'd like you to join us. Yeah. <laughs> but please feel free to join whichever chapter you'd like or more. So um, a couple of months ago, the East Bay chapter sent out um, requests for membership. I personally joined the East Bay chapter as well. Um, anybody, any local okay. chapters, if they asked me to join, I would join just to support. I, I do have something to say. I've had hearing aids over a decade and I just didn't really get much in the way of resource information. Do, do, um, Hearing centers, do they have, did, was I just in a not good place? Do, do, do uh, providers know about all these resources? I mean, I should have been told about you immediately, you know, this organization and others. So Pamela, it is like this white, this huge elephant in the room. I have advocated and advocated and advocated with all of our local um, audiologists, hearing aid providers, hospitals, cochlear implant centers. And I can honestly tell you, everybody's reticent. I don't understand it. I understand that in running their business, time is money and it's difficult to run businesses today, but it wouldn't be difficult for them to hand somebody um, our brochure right. and say, oh, well, you know, you might like this group. They provide additional support that you might need. And so my comment is that if audiologists and hearing healthcare providers and ENTs and everybody was doing their job, there wouldn't be a need for HLAA. Well, and then the schools that train them, they should learn this in school. Well, we have actively, I wear many hats in our HLAA family and um, work with lots of people on the national level who give presentations at professional events, Juliet Sturkins, who is uh, a retired audiologist, who is our get in the hearing loop advocate, gives presentations to like the California Academy of Audiology all over the United States. And they still are dawdle, they still dawdle, I don't get it. So I'm really happy that you found us. Well, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> every single person who's here was here because they were just like you. 
And some of us have a thirst for knowledge like I do. And I was born with a, a sponge on my forehead for things. And so I am always gathering, gaining more new information um, without my link to HLAA. I think I would have been devastated. My hearing ha ha was a progressive hearing loss. I went from mild to moderate hearing loss to profound loss. I'm now a cochlear implant recipient. Without HLA, I would have had no support. Yeah. I wouldn't have known anything. So welcome. Thank you. Can I ask you one quick question? Yeah, we have time. I know about Dogs for Better Lives the, in Center, Oregon, that um, trains hearing assistive dog, assisted dogs. Are there other places that do that in California? Uh, how do I get, find them? <laughs> so you go to our website. Okay. Go to the tab. Um, which tab is that actually? Um, hang on a minute. Amy. Uh, uh, one of the things that I wanted to say for a new person is that um, if you could go to other places like the, uh, I've been part of the East Bay uh, Hearing Loss Association for a number of years. If you go to the, their various Zoom meetings, I think you get a sense of the, the kind of feeling there is in the group. I hope we get out of uh, having to do everything by Zoom in a few months because one of the things that I found very inviting about the Hearing Loss Association in the East Bay is that there was a, a very warm sense of welcome and belonging. And I think that's harder to get on Zoom. Uh, so I would uh, recommend that you visit the different uh, meetings that are within driving distance of where you, you can go. And especially when we have person-to-person uh, -person meetings, I think you'll get a sense of what, what, what group you feel comfortable with. And okay, you thank can you. belong to more than one group. You can go, okay. even in person, you can go to different groups meetings. Okay, <laughs> sounds like a plan. <laughs> Um, and on your website, I would find more about dogs. Where? Um, Alan, do you remember where the dogs things is? Is it an, under organizations? <laughs> and it's called Hearing Dogs. Oh. Assistance Dogs, right here. Okay. So it's under... Oh, it's under organizations and then hearing dogs. Assistance dogs, Canine Assistance. Companions, San Simeon Foundation. And Canine oh, Companions for Independence is in Santa Rosa. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll be back. This is once a month. Your meetings yeah. are once a month. I'll be back. First Saturday. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay, Lynn, did you have a question? Yeah, I uh, comment. Um, a while ago, you were talking about how to save information off of the screen. And I just wanted to add that I use a Mac. And whenever there's something on the screen I want to save, I do a screenshot, which is a shift command three. And whatever was on the screen shows up in the corner of my um, screen and I can go back and look at it later. Shift. Was that shift command three? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I don't know what you do on a PC. Alan or Tim, you want to address that? 
It depends on how you have things set up. By default, there is on the keyboard a print screen key. I'm gonna make it. Um, it doesn't work probably quite as nice as a Mac in that once you capture the screen, I think you still have to save it someplace. Um, my computer is set up, is set up a little bit different, so I don't rem remember exactly how it works. But it does take advantage of the print screen key on the keyboard. So for those of you who have Macs, so Lynn told you the keyboard shortcut. And when you do that, it takes the full screen. If you go into your apps, there is an app called Screenshot. If you use the Screenshot app, you have more options as to what you can do. You can drag a box for what you would like to take the shot of. You can also do a recording. You can also do timed. So it does a countdown, you know, like when you're taking the family picture and you want um, everybody to be smiling at the same time. So you put, you know, like five seconds. So the camera then automatically takes the shot. It has that feature as well. This is Pam. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. I'm sorry. But um, I'm used to doing this with customer service and I have an HP laptop. So I just highlighted the whole chat, hit control C and then pasted it into an email and emailed it to myself. That's how I got lost when you were trying to talk to me before because I lost you. <laughs> but so, that's... Pam, I'd like, to, before, I'd like to walk you through how you raise your hand. So see the little icon in the black um, piece at the bottom of your screen that says reaction? That's where I am, but I so, only see thumbs up and things like that. The first one there is raise your hand and it's in its language. It says, oh, mine hand. says clap. No, no. So you see clap, thumbs up the heart. Then the next row down is uh, a green check, a knot backwards and forwards. And then the bottom one is raise hand. Do you see that? No, no. I, mine goes. You uh, need to upgrade your version of Zoom. Oh, I, I've only used Zoom a couple of times, so I believe you. <laughs> yeah, so that, so this, um, they changed, it used to be in participants and they moved it here. And it's been like that, maybe two and a half months. So just update your Zoom and it'll be there next time. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. um, and we want to let you know, you can also save the chat. So when you have the oh. chat open, um, the three dots running like this that are called meatballs, when you click on that, one of the options, the top option is save the chat. And oh. it saves to your computer. Okay. Yeah. I see it. But the reason I was suggesting to Jill something is for me personally, sometimes the chat is so long if it's an hour's meeting, you know, might be kind of hard to find that one piece that you were looking for. But that's oh, okay. And I, the, it was the screen print seemed to, uh, that would take a long time if you wanted a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I found the save chat. Thank you. Okay, Lynn. And Your good turn. morning. And good morning. This is Steve. Hi, Steve. One other thing on what Lynn just suggested if you have a Mac, you can go Shift Command 4. And as you started to say, you can create a box. And you can just, you don't have to do the whole screen. You just pick what you want. But as soon as you let your fingers go, it will do it. So if you, um, you may have to re redo it if you just want a specific part. So I use the screenshot 
all the time. So in the directions that we have at the beginning of the Zoom meetings, all of those were screenshots that were taken of the Zoom settings. So I set up a fake Zoom meeting so that I can take the screenshot of the icons so that you can all see it. And I just have it in my dock. And so having it in my dock, I can I have access to all of the features when I click on it. Anything else? Amy Mass, I wanted to say hello to you. I haven't seen you in, since lip reading. How are you doing? Are you still here? Unmute yourself, Amy. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, I'm managing, uh, it's been up and down, I guess, with the pandemic, but I'm in a, a senior residence now, and there are a lot of good people to talk to, just even walking to the elevator, so I don't feel is isolated at all. Um, I'm still struggling whenever I get a chance, and I know you're speaking, I try to listen, because if you even get like 5% of what you're getting, it's adding to my very difficult uh, getting working on computer things. So I'll follow you around. <laughs> and Amy, I am always here. Alan and I are always here. If you would like a one-to-one -one about how to do something, just email us. We're happy to help you. Thank you very much. I may take you up on that. Okay, so we need to thank, oh, oh, I know, I did something special, but then sometimes I forget about it here. Okay, so there's the Q&A. And Bob Zastro always has muffins for our in-person meeting. So obviously we can't get the muffin that way. So. Here is Bob Zastro's muffin to you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> and, you know, this weekend is a special holiday weekend for so many people. And so I have, rather than an Easter greeting, I have a spring greeting to all of you. And this is the first animated piece I've put in a PowerPoint. So I wish all of you a very, very happy weekend. And thanks for joining us. Corey Dosty, as always, we're forever grateful to you for the fabulous captions that you provide us. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend.